Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well today. I'm about to uh, get into this uh, video. I saw this um, online. It's obviously a political commercial for uh, by uh, Pierre Polyev on his website. So it's uh, you got to go looking for it. But it was in my feed, so I guess I YouTube um, YouTube really knows that I follow. Canadian politics a lot. So this uh, intrigued me. It has a really, a really fun name. I call BS. <laughs> and Pierre, he knows uh, how to call things straight, or he, he, he calls it like he sees them. Uh, I think he's a very straight-talking politician, as far as politicians go. And uh, I want to I wanna find out exactly what he, he's calling BS on episode of I Call BS. Today's subject is housing and Trudeau's latest excuse for doubling your rent and mortgage payments. You'll never believe who he's blaming this time. But before I break it to you, it's not a surprise Trudeau is grasping to blame anyone and everyone. After all, since he promised affordable homes, Canada's housing costs have doubled. They've outpaced incomes faster in Canada than in any other G7 country, now costing 20... It's just... Uh... Uh, pause here for a second. Housing costs have doubled in eight years. Eight years, housing costs have doubled. I don't know about you, but my income haven't hasn't doubled in eight years. It's, keeping up is uh, it's, it's not easy. Twenty-five to forty-five percent more than south of the border. Demographia says that Vancouver is the third most overpriced housing market in the world. And you can now buy a 20-bedroom castle in Scotland for less than a two-bedroom in Kitchener. So blame anyone and everyone to get the heat off Trudeau, right? But you'll never believe who he's blamed this time. Not Stephen Harper, but Jean Chrétien. Yes, that Jean Chrétien, the former Liberal Prime Minister. Here's what Trudeau's housing minister said. And, and I should, to be fair, uh, point to the cuts that were made in the early 90s under a Liberal government that That's actually true. discontinued investment in, in affordable housing for low-income uh, Canadians. Now, it is true that in 1995, the Liberal government of Jean Chrétien cancelled a lot of housing programs to save money and fight the debt crisis left behind by Pierre Trudeau. So, so yeah, if you were around back in the day, it was... You know, uh, mortgages were really high. Um, you know, it it was even worse than today. I, I as I recall, it was worse than today. Uh, the the cost of a mortgage, and that was all under uh, the the first Trudeau, Justin's dad, Pierre. So there, you know, you kind of have to uh, take that for what it's worth. Justin is following in his father's footsteps, essentially. He, Pierre was the worst prime minister that Canada had ever known up until Justin came into power. Can we blame the Chrétien government from the mid-90s for doubling housing costs over the last eight years? Well, let's check out the data. Here's the RBC housing affordability chart which measures home ownership costs as a percentage of median household income. Simply put, it's the share of the average family's pre-tax paycheck needed to make monthly payments on the average home. Pre-tax. Pre-tax. So this is, if you're, if you're making 80 or $100,000 a year, then before taxes so this would come out of what you're what you'd be making uh before tax so most i think the average canadian is making 50,000 a year so let's just take 50,000 100,000 would be easier to calculate obviously but let's just take 50,000 if indeed Jean Chrétien's cuts to these federal housing programs really are to blame for today's problems you'd expect the graph to look like this, with a sudden rise in housing costs right when the cuts took place, or at least like this, with a gradual worsening of affordability starting right after the cuts. But 
the graph shows no such thing. Here's what the graph actually looks like. Instead, housing affordability actually improved after Kretchen's spending cuts and then remained stable for 13 years before a brief jump towards the beginning of the U.S. housing crisis. And then again, housing costs moderated back to their long-term average by 2015, a full 20 years after Kretchen canceled these programs. Now, okay, so when you're looking at this graph, it's very interesting to see that we have, um, you know, about 57% of your pre-tax income needed to pay for your home in looks like they're about 1990 or just before 1990. And, you know, uh, then it started to drop off and did pretty well, you know, when you're looking just over 30%. So uh, that would be, let's say, let's call that about 30, 33% at its lowest or 32% at its lowest. So that would be, what about uh, 16% or $16,000 if you're making $50,000 a year. That's before you pay your taxes. So that's, uh, you know, I don't know that to me, that's still a lot of money, but okay. We're looking here, uh, 2000 and what would that be about 2000 and I don't know, seven, it reached a high again. Um, what does it look about? Uh, 45%. That seems really high to me, 45%. So if you're thinking about uh, a $50,000 a year job, you're going to be paying, um, you know, well, I don't know what that would be, $50,000, 20000 a year. That's... Uh, that's a lot of money. And we're going to, if you look here, is that about 38%? That's pretty high still, I think, but uh, a lot lower than it is now. Look at that, over 60%. So that would mean if you're making $50,000 a year pre-tax, so you're gross, Right here, so this would be 60, I don't know, 62%. So you would be paying $31,000 a year if uh, uh, of your pre-tax income. So you would have less than $20,000 left over. You have like... $18,000 left over or $19,000 left over, I should say, to live off of. And you're taxed on that. So you have to pay your taxes on that. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Here in the chart, you see the time when I was housing minister when it took about 38% of the average family's paycheck to make payments on the average home. Now enter Justin Trudeau. Okay, now that, they say paycheck, so I thought this was pre-tax. Maybe this, maybe he's talking about post-tax uh, income because uh, if it's 38% of your paycheck, that would be post-tax, I would think. Because uh, pre-tax would be uh, before your paycheck, so I don't know. Let's uh, let's just listen to what he has to say. In affordable housing, he promised to bring back the federal housing programs that Jean Chrétien had cancelled. The federal government is not only back in housing, but we're here to stay. And he did. The Trudeau government brought back in eighty-nine billion dollars of so-called affordable housing programs in Ottawa. Now you'd expect if these programs were effective that there would be a drop in housing costs after the spending began. So what are the results of all this spending? Well, housing costs shot up. In fact, they become less affordable 
than in the entire recorded history of the Royal Bank's measure. Never before has the average Canadian family had to spend 62% of their monthly pre-tax income. 62% of your monthly pre-tax income. 62% pre-tax. So, okay, so he, he has confirmed this is pre-tax. So you're going to have to make up your tax or your, yeah, you're going to have to pay your tax on what's left over just to make monthly payments on the average home. And that's why, after eight years of Trudeau, roughly 26% of Canadians are the only ones who can afford a single family home. So when Trudeau ministers blame a decision from 30 years ago for a problem that only began in 2015, I call BS. Now this is important. Because if we accept the falsehood that ending federal pro housing programs caused the problem, we might be tricked into thinking that bringing them back is the solution. It is not, as proven by the fact that housing affordability improved when the programs were eliminated and worsened at the fastest pace ever when the Trudeau government brought them back. Why? Because these programs build bureaucracy and not homes. So now you must pay more to buy or rent and you must pay more on your taxes for housing programs that only make the problem worse. It's bad to fail, it's even worse to fail expensively. You see, we don't need scapegoats or excuses or more government programs. We need my common sense plan that builds homes, not bureaucracy. It requires municipalities permit 15% more homes per year as a condition of getting federal money. It sells off 6,000 federal buildings for housing and speeds up CMHC's approval of housing finance to two months and not two years. More homes, less bureaucracy, more common sense, less BS. Let's bring it home. You know, that does make a lot of sense. I can tell, I can say from living through it in Canada that uh, it's just incredibly expensive to to pay for a home uh, these days, especially with the interest rates skyrocketing. You know, they, they keep telling Canadians that they want to get more people into homes and they want to, you know, uh, make it more affordable to purchase a home. But yet, because of their spending, interest rates have shot right up. I have a variable mortgage. I've kept the variable mortgage because I'm hoping uh, that the rates will come down to a point where it'll even out and average out that I won't be paying uh, too much, you know, in uh, in mortgage payments. My mortgage payments shot up six hundred dollars uh, a month. Actually, more than that uh, because some months there's three payments instead of instead of two. So $300 every, every time I pay my mortgage payment, pay uh, every two weeks. And that's been since I bought my, the house I'm living in, in uh, 2022. So mortgage rates started to shoot right up after that. And now I'm paying $300 more every mortgage payment, which translates into, uh, I think it's somewhere around uh, 750 or $700 a month more. And that's, so that's money I don't have to, uh, to pay my bills and I'm barely making it. If, if mortgage rates go up any further, uh, I'm really not sure what I'm, I'm going to do. I'm, I'm renovating my house right now and um, like this room is a total mess because of it. This is my storage room actually that I'm, you know, uh, where I put all the stuff that I don't want to get covered in drywall dust. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's to the point where I can work a couple of days on the house and then I have to wait until my, uh, RCMP pension comes in at the end of the month 
so that I can buy some more material and do some more work. And it's not much work. I mean, this is a really slow process where if I, ha if I could have a decent amount of pay, if I had that extra $700, I could work throughout the month on the house. I wouldn't have to wait to, to be able to afford to put 200 or $300 more into the house at the end of the month. So, I mean, that's just my personal experience. It's, you know, it's not meant to uh, get anybody uh, sympathy for me. I'm just showing you how in real life uh, circumstances, how this government with their overspending has cost Canadians uh, money and put them in hardship positions. You know, I'm, I'm in the middle of uh, renovating a house. I can't even sell this house because it's in a state of, well, repair until uh, I, I finish. And I can't finish until I get money. So, I mean, in, in a bit of a catch-22. So, I'm sure that everybody out there has a story that they could, uh, that they have as well, that they could relate. So yeah, this, uh, I, I think he, I think he's right. I can call BS on this as well. Uh, he, Trudeau has completely messed this up and he's blaming other people. He's done that throughout his, uh, prime ministership. He's blamed other people for his failures. And I, you know, I'm sick of it. I hope that everybody else is sick of it. I, I hope that we, don't send him back to Ottawa after the next election. And I'm, I, I, really, I really hope that somehow he's forced to call an early election. The sooner the better. We got to get rid of this fool. He's just killing our country, killing our country. But anyway, that's uh, my reaction to this video. Uh, I hope you like it. And we'll see you on the next review, next video. Thanks. Hey everybody, I hope you liked that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification button. Also share with your friends if you liked it and we'll see you on the next video.